Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is The Last Raider. I'm back with another video, and this time in an area where I, I'm kind of out of my depth, but it is talking about entertainment. It's one of the things about my channel. I, I, I've said this before, there is a, a strong connection between what the left is doing in politics now, all the craziness you're seeing, and what the left is doing in entertainment right now. And this, this qualifies, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hammer on it right now. Because some people need to look at this and realize just where this is going. Uh, NFL plans to play Black National Anthem before Week 1 games this season. I think there's also another article, I've been trying to find it, where it says they're going to play both anthems. And I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this like, you're going to play both anthems. Really? So, um, if black people stand up for the Star Spangled Banner, are we going to tell them to sit their black ass back down because it's not about them? And then when the black national anthem comes up, you're going to tell white people to sit their cracker ass back down because it's not about them? Um, can people stand up for both anthems? If they can stand up for both anthems, why do we need two of them? One thing the Star Spangled Banner is, it has nothing to do with race. It is a... If I recall the way, if you ever read the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, nowhere does it talk about race. It talks about the battle. It talks about a specific battle. That's what the, the Star Spangled Banner is about. Uh, one man was on a ship. I believe it was he was on a ship near the battle or something, and he wrote the Star Spangled Banner because there's a part in there where it says the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. That in the night, there were, there were some people who could not see the flag except for the bombs blowing up in the sky. That's how they knew their flag had not fallen yet. That's how they knew the Americans were still holding whatever, holding, I think it was a fort. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember what fort, and I'm not going to say it because it'll make, because I'm pretty big about that. I'm not going to say what it is, so we're not going to. Because I don't want to look stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to say, I don't know. I'll take responsibility for my lack of knowledge and go on. But anyhow, you, you have these idiots now going into the NFL. This is, this is not new, okay? NFL is go, getting woke, and they're going to go broke eventually. Uh, the only thing the NFL needs right now is some good competition. Um, I've said this before, Missouri right now, as far as I know, doesn't have a team. Our team left and went to liberal California, and we burnt the hell out of the jerseys, man. We, they lost their fan base in Missouri and went to L.A., and they're hated in L.A. So I'm like, good riddance. Stay there. You keep your, keep your dadgum goat selves over there if you think you're so badass. You don't need Missourians. We don't want you here now either. We supported you. You left us, so no, we're not gonna. We, you don't get to stay here anymore. But Missouri's got some football stadiums and stuff. I just haven't figured out why Missouri has not started its own football league and call it the Missouri League or something, <laughs> the MFL. Uh, but then invite all the other teams to come play and just you know get them in, get them to come in there and compete for a trophy. You know, well, you know, we like to get a trophy from the MFL, you know. We got the NFL trophies. We like to get the MFL trophies. There's also this thing now also they're saying you can't put um pro police stickers now on the Cowboys helmets. I know that probably is affecting some Cowboys fans. Uh it's just like ESPN, you know, ESPN's from what I've understood, I've got got I'm not like I said, I'm not a sports fan. I'm more of a, you know, gun fighting comic book guy. And the problem that everyone keeps talking about, as I said, ESPN is just getting political. We're so sick of it. We want them to talk about sports. And I've told everyone the same thing. I said, then make your own sports channel, okay? Hire you some good-looking chicks, because there are plenty of women out there that are hot and know football. You could hire some really hot-looking chicks who know their shit on football, put them in there with some guys that, you know, are football jocks, and just have them talk back and forth about it. Missouri, actually, um, there's, a, there's a place in, in my state called KFBS 12. At one point in time, they put a hot redhead up on screen. <laughs> and she was like super energetic. She might still be there. She was super energetic. And everyone's like, wow, we like this lady. 
Look at the sports coverage right now. It's great. <laughs> Just do that. Get those, what is it, those call, what, not the call girls. What are they? They're the chicks that they usually take to races or something or in fights. They walk around in the bikini and hold up the numbers. Their feminists are now taking their jobs away. They probably know these sports just as good as the guys do because they talk with some of the players. They talk with some of the professionals that are in the sports. Have you a deal and hire a few of them chicks as your 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 spot your uh, you know your gra- on the ground reporting for the new freedom entertain for the new freedom sports network and say you know what um have these really hot chicks tell them uh you know dress a little provocatively so the guys will talk to you more and you send them out there it'd be like what is that scene from uh undercover brother where the guy goes we're gonna send in our secret weapon I call it black man's kryptonite. <laughs> just, there's too many football players, basketball players going to be. I mean, LeBron James going to look over and see, like, see, you got this one dude you could talk to, or you got this chick in a club dress over there. I, I, I want to be political, but that cocktail dress is just looking awesome right now. We'll would just go towards it. This is how you need to to fight this these people because they are puritanical idiots, and this is what MAGA people. Boomers and all of y'all on the right need to realize when fighting these people. Back in the day, the right pulled a lot of puritanical stuff and it didn't work. It absolutely didn't work. The more you clamped down, the worse it got. You have to embrace freedom. Okay? Embrace freedom and free market and free expression. If these chicks come out there and say, you know, if we can, you know, flaunt it off and do a job, we're willing to do it. And they, they've said that before. They're willing to flaunt off to do a job. They're respected in the industry. Respect them. Have them go in there. But tell them, look, uh, this is entertainment. We want you to entertain. You have assets. Use them. Okay? And we will pay you hefty amounts of money for it. Then set up like a subscription service and start putting ESPN out of business. Because they still have, they've got a subscription service, but they've also got their cable network system. And I mean, just kill that. I mean, that's, that's a money drain in itself. I don't understand why people don't do more of this. Comics gate has proven you can do it. For those of you don't know what comics gate is, there was a point where comic book fans, they finally, they started a grassroots movement. One person stood up there and started talking about sports. And the next thing, you know, <clears throat> they started kicking the crap out of the, you know, not sports. What the heck? I am so messed up at the moment. Hang on, let me re let me just, you know, realign everything for a minute. No, they were talking about politics inside of comic books, basically. And a couple of guys in comic comics gate, you know, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, Yellow Flash, that umbrella guy. If you don't know these people, go check them out. Richard C. Myers of Yaco- of Comics Matter. They went out there and they said, uh, you know, this is wrong. We don't like this. And finally they got mad at your boy Zach, who also knows Richard C. Meyer. And they said, uh, if you don't like it, go do something on your own. So he went out and he did a comic book and made money. Okay? You got to remember something. This is this is what I, I'm telling people right now. America is going through an entertainment drought. If you can find an oasis in the desert that's been created by the liberal left, you are going to make so much money. Because you will be controlling. It's, it's Like I said, it's like controlling a water source in the desert. You control it. You make the rules. You can decide. If the people are thirsty for entertainment, they're sick and tired of seeing agendas being thrown in there. They're tired of being told, oh, you're you're white, you're a bigot. Almost every single TV show now, almost every single comic book from the mainstream, almost every single political group, every single form of entertainment comes in and says, white bad, white bad. And they're mad. At, they, they go in there and they start this nonsense. But when they do it, they see these massive declines. All right, Terminator recently came out and said by doing the movie the way they did it, they ultimately killed the Terminator franchise. The franchise is no more, <clears throat> okay? You just got the first two Terminator movies, maybe the third one where uh, it has the TX, which was, eh, the TX was kind of hot. <laughs> I mean, eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? That kind of sold that, and Arnold was what was carrying that movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta you gotta love the Terminators. They carry the movie. They usually carry the movies pretty good. But if you have these people coming in, they're destroying stuff like Star Wars. They're going after tabletop games. I know a lot of y'all are probably listening or MAGA people listening to this video and thinking, "What in the world? They're in this stuff?" Oh yeah, they're these are the people that come out there and say that orcs are black people. All right, um, you've got to really be thinking about race to think 
to think that. But as I said, they're coming in here and they're, they're taking entertainment, wholesome entertainment that people like of different areas. And they're saying, uh, this is racist. This is bad. We're going to change it. It's sexist. Y'all let us come in here and fix all this nonsense so it's not so bad anymore. And then they get in there and it never makes money. And when it doesn't make money, they go, oh, hey, look, see, we fixed it. We fixed it. No, you didn't. You broke it. You got to remember, when the leftists get involved in something, they're not a person who knows what they're doing. They're a dumb idiot that walks in there and says, it appears that your, your engine is broken. Give me a hammer. And they start bashing the spark plugs with a mallet. They start taking a shop hammer and just start bashing the spark plugs till they till the porcelain shatters out of it and it overheats the system and then your your engine just completely goes kaput and you're like, what did you do to my car? And they're like, well, we used a tool. We can fix it. It's like a, it's like a saying in carpentry. Everybody is a car. Everybody says they're a carpenter, but not everybody can be a carpenter. Okay. You have there. There's two forms of income. There's stuff that nature does, and then there's stuff that idiots do who don't know what they're doing, and you come in behind them and fix it. That's where real carpenters make a lot of their money is fixing someone else's fudge up. But like I said, go out there and make your own entertainment. You want ESPN? Go out. I didn't. I didn't told you how to do ESPN. All right. Do your own version of ESPN and start shutting them down. Refuse to sell. Hold out until they until you drain them dry. All right? Put hot chicks out. Have like some good looking chicks on there. You know, they're easy on the eyes and attractive that cause people, you know, oh, wow, that one chick is on. We need to watch. What's she talking about? She's talking about sports, man. A hot chick that talks about sports. Y'all know that would sell. Everybody knows that would sell. It's like I always, it's like um, Xena Warrior Princess when that came out. It was some fairly decent looking girls kicking ass the whole times and sometimes breaking down and kissing lesbian style. I know a lot of people don't like that, but it, it was attractive back in the 90s. That was the thing, like Baywatch, for instance. Why do you think Baywatch was so impressive? Baywatch had good stories and it had Pamela Anderson run down the beach. It was awesome. <laughs> you don't see entertainment like that anymore because they don't want to make it. They want you to be completely inundated that you are, they want to guilt trip you into watching their stuff because their stuff is actual crap. The NFL is no longer worth watching. Like, uh, most of the time, if I go over there to uh, my step grand, or not my step granddad, my grandfather in law, my wife is big in football. I'm not. Kind of weird, opposite. But she's. She's a good-looking woman who likes football. That's why I say there's women out there that know. She knows all the rules. She knows the rules to football. She could easily handle it. She could easily tell you anything about it. And I'm like, you should get a job as a sports cast. She's like, ha, ESPN wouldn't let me be on there. I'm too good-looking. But, no, I mean, <laughs> but she, the, the thing is, if you were to go in there and fight ESPN and just create ESPN, what it used to be, or start a football league that was what football used to be, Give them the ability, you know, like in professional football, you know, let them, you know, like do the touchdown stuff. Let them put what they want on their helmets as long as it's not like swastikas. Just say, look, uh, we don't like swastikas. You don't put that on your helmets. Then we're okay. Tell the black players, you know, you can put Black Lives Matter on the back of your helmets. We don't give a fuck. We just don't want swastikas back there. Okay. We, we draw the line at swastikas. All right. That's what we don't want. <laughs> And they and just let them put whatever they want on there, and then you would have a bunch of players be like, oh, you know, uh, we can be more expressive in this sport. We can express our our policies and our politics a bit more. Uh, we don't have to worry about a lot of shit. We don't have to worry about insulting people because the company's like, we don't care. We're here for good football, and just put the NFL out of business because the NFL because over time player other teams. That's why the NFL can do this to your team. That's why they can go to the Dallas Cowboys. And tell them, hey, you know what? You can take uh, you take off all those pro police stickers because then they just threaten to kick them out of the league. They got nowhere else to go. They've spent all this money on a league. You have to start somewhere. You have to start inviting people into your own league. Missouri could do it. A lot of other states could get involved as well. They could start their own uh, secondary league and start competing with them. But nobody likes. But I mean, here's the thing: uh, NFL is not going to like competition. Yeah, they're going to get stupid, but most people don't like the idea of fighting them. Look, at some point in time, you're going to have to step off your off your deal, and someone's going to have to take the reins and do it. That knows what they're doing. I would say I'd do it 
But frick, I don't know the first thing about football. I know you got to get a ball to the other end of the field. I am horrible at this. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anywho, yeah, folks, uh, that's that's pretty much what's going down right now with your entertainment. I mean, the NFL is just a symptom of what's going on. It's being inundated and being attacked because football is American. It's American football. It's not soccer. Uh, baseball will eventually become the next target. <clears throat> it's like I said, it's not about the flag. It's not about racism. When you take the flag of a, the United States, the Star Spangled Banner, which stood against the Confederate stars and bars, and you burn both of them in the street, and you claim both are racist. All right? It's just, it's racism and this nonsense of, oh, we're going to be more inclusive. It's a ploy. It's camouflage. It's a smoke screen so they can go in and ruin what culture you have left. Anyway, leave me a, leave me your thoughts in the comments, folks. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notification if you want to see more videos from this channel. And uh, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video.